Let's uh, call the July 14th board meeting to order. And we, I guess we're celebrating that we're all together on a Tuesday night and that I'm here because I thought it was going to be Thursday. So <laughs> thank you, Bambi. Um, let's see. We don't have any comments from patrons, obviously. So let's, Bambi, let the minute show that we have an established quorum of 100% again. And the first item will be to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of May 14th. Motion to approve. Second. All righty, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There's Travis Hopkins. All right, so let's go straight to reports then. And Mr. Wiggins, you're up first. I would like to uh, let you know that the honors luncheon uh, was last week uh, during the week on Thursday, I believe. And um, the John Brown University hosted that, Chamber put on the event. Uh, they've turned it into the Department of Health as a large event and got it approved and had everything spaced out, socially distanced. And it was a, uh, a good event from what I'm told. I had to miss it because of a, a family issue, uh, but uh, I am told that it was a, a really nice event and that uh, we had almost all of our seniors uh, that uh, received that honor as an honor, honor graduate uh, that were able to attend. And uh, just letting you know, we had a limited attendance, so none of you all were invited. I apologize for that. Uh, but we had to limit the attendance and it was basically family and the honor graduates and the business representatives that were honoring them. And I'm told that it was a very nice event. Uh, so just letting you know that. Uh, we have also, as of last night, we started meeting with our ready to learning, uh, ready for learning committee. Um, there, I have invited I think it was the final count was 51 people uh, from our school district and community to be on that committee to talk about reopening of schools and to uh, discuss our plans for doing so. Uh, had almost, uh, I think it was 41 on a Zoom meeting last night of that 51. Uh, so that was a good turnout. Uh, we have administrators, teachers, uh, a couple of students, parents, and community representatives on that committee. And we will be presenting uh, the school, our, our, my team will be presenting our plan over the next uh, couple of weeks. We have four Zoom meetings set up. Uh, the next one is Thursday evening of this week and then Tuesday and Thursday of next week. And so we will be going through our plan, uh, which is a, a very fluid plan at this point. There's parts of it that will change. And I let the committee know that, uh, that uh, nothing will be solid until we get to the start of school because uh, things are changing every every week and if not every day for us. Um, but I uh, wanted some feedback on some things that we are planning on doing and that committee will have an opportunity to provide that through Zoom and then we are giving them the opportunity to provide feedback uh, digitally as well uh, on some Google Forms that we've sent out uh, to all of those those team members. And I will keep you all up to date, uh, the board, as we go through this and, and keep you up to date with what that plan looks like as well. Um, the last part uh, of my report uh, is concerning graduation. And our last meeting, you all, uh, we made the decision uh, to not have in-person graduation. Uh, there was some negative feedback, uh, as we might have expected, from some parents and some seniors. Uh, but our high school put together a wonderful plan for a virtual graduation and gave our kids all the opportunity to walk across the stage uh, in the theater uh, over the course of three or four days and receive their diploma and be filmed and have the opportunity to have family there and take pictures of them in their cap and gown and their diploma. Um, and I think that they did a very, very good job with that. I know all the board members have gone in and, and, uh, provided a, a short video clip congratulating our seniors and all of that will be put together. Uh, it's actually, I think, completed at this point and it will be uh, uh, released live on Friday evening. And I will, either Bambi or I1 will send the board members a link uh, to that virtual graduation, hopefully tomorrow, 
so that you all can watch that as well. But I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a top quality uh, virtual graduation. I think it will. Uh, uh, I think the opportunity for our kids to walk across the stage and have pictures taken uh, mean a lot to our parents and our kids, and I think that eased some of the pain of not being able to have that in person. So I appreciate my high school administrators, uh, especially the uh, TV, uh, the uh, TV class uh, sponsors, uh, Tiffany and Megan have done a wonderful job with that. And I know they had a whole lot of help from counselors and administrators and teachers over there putting that together. And so I appreciate our high school trying to put something nice together for, for our seniors and to give them the opportunity to actually walk across stage. So that concludes my report. So you say that the virtual graduation has been completed and being put together and all that stuff then? Everybody's graduated or whatever? They, they have completed all of the filming of the, of the graduates going across the stage. And I think they have compiled it all into one video. They may be still refining that a little bit, uh, but they will release that live on Friday evening uh, our original graduation was supposed to be at eight o'clock, and I believe they're releasing that at seven. Is it? Oh, okay. Uh, Can uh, maybe night. Bambi Bambi shoot us a yes email or something about that? It will have. She will shoot you an email that will have the time and the link to actually view it. Good. All right. Thank you. What was uh, Jody? What was our participation numbers like? Oh, we have just over 300 uh, graduates, and I know at one time they had uh, in the low 200s uh, that had made an appointment. That was not the final number, though. I'm not sure that I ever actually heard the final number, but we had uh, probably two-thirds, it looked like, that were going to participate uh, and come and walk across the stage and have pictures taken. And Good. so hopefully it turned out to be more than that, but I know that uh, leading into that last day, that was, that was the number that I'd heard. And even the, the ones who do, did not uh, come up and have that opportunity to do that or, or did not take advantage of that opportunity, they will be, their names will be called out during the virtual graduation. And we have a, a still picture of everyone. So there will be a still picture for any of those that didn't show up for that short video clip. Good, good. Any, any other questions for Jody? Okay, then we'll move on to Amy Carter. Good evening. I just wanted to provide a couple of quick updates on a um, couple of big pieces that we've talked about in prior board meetings. The first one is our virtual academy. And so um, I know that you've heard about that and probably seen some of the um, updates that Bambi posts for us or on the website. We finished enrollment Friday. That was our um, cutoff date after extending it for one week. We are sitting right around 470 students enrolled in the virtual academy. And that um, quite a bit larger than where we started in early June. But with the need of what has been expressed in the community through phone calls or Facebook posts or different forms of communication, um, Mr. Wiggins decided to extend that and increase enrollment. And we can clearly see that it was needed by the numbers that we have. So um, we have had to make a few adjustments. We um, are later in the board meeting proposing, um, recommending for hire a virtual academy coordinator that we um, held panel interviews with. And then we have also now posted um, internally only for um, virtual academy teachers that will come from our current population of educators. So just wanted to provide that quick update on virtual school. And then my second piece is about our alternative learning environment. If you remember back several months ago, we asked for approval to submit a K-4 ALE program and then a 5-8 ALE program. And with 
COVID and everything that has happened in the spring, I think they've been a little bit later, but last week we were notified that both programs were approved. And so we will have that as an additional offering to help with our wraparound services for our students. And we are currently in the process with Ms. Earwood um, leading some of those panel interviews. We will be, we've posted positions for the K-4 and the 5-8 ALE teacher, and that can come internally or externally, but um, hopefully by the next board meeting, we will have some recommendation for hires for those positions. And we are anxious to get started because we know that we are going to, we already have students that need this option and then we may have more in the future. Any questions, thoughts, ideas? Virtual Academy, um, when we're looking at teachers to, to staff that, are we looking at some of our high risk people that might be better off teaching virtually? Okay, we are looking at in, any of our teachers that apply, we're going to um, vet through all of the applications and then um, we will look at who is the best option. Some people have already expressed interest and some of those, um, Dr. Matchell, may be high risk and may not. Um, I don't know that I'll ask that up front, but um, that would certainly be something that could play into it over time. But we definitely want to make sure that our virtual teachers are um, committed to that and they're going to give the time and effort needed. Um, it'll be a different environment for them as well as those 400 plus students that we'll be serving. Mm -hmm. With using the Pearson software, um, is it going to be a little bit more structured so that they will follow some sort of a structure versus doing their own thing? Yes, ma'am. They're um, through the Pearson platform and we'll learn more when we actually have full access to that. But um, the lessons come out at each grade level and there are goals that are set. And then part of our coordinator's job and our teacher's job are going to be to look at that like on a quarterly basis and help set those goals for where students should be either in a weekly or a two week kind of span. And so with that curriculum, um, it's, it's very outlined and organized. So teachers will have that. And um, through conversations with Mr. Wiggins, we felt that with it being such a change, having a curriculum that teachers don't have to hunt and search for was going to be our best avenue sure. to help support the teachers that choose mm -hmm. to do this as well as our students. Sure. What are the grade levels gonna be in the virtual? They will be K-12. Really? Okay. K-12. And we have um, 24, 25 students up to 55 students per grade level. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. It's yeah. pretty evenly dispersed. Last time I looked, 11th grade was our lowest number, and it was like 22 students at that grade level. Hmm. That surprised you. So it's the whole spectrum then, K through 12. Okay. It certainly is, which was a surprise to us too, Mr. Lamb. Yes. We kind of thought we might have some sections or grade levels that maybe had a higher interest, but when it all shuffled out in the final numbers, it's pretty evenly dispersed except for, I think there's two grade levels, maybe second and eighth grade that are sitting around 55 each. Mm. Wow. Interesting. Okay. And you and you said the deadline is we, we've cut it off or are we still mm -hmm. allowing any that might trickle in that change because of whatever issue? We cut the cutoff date was this past Friday the uh, 10th if I got my date right just then Friday the 10th was our cutoff and so at the moment we're not accepting any more until we can get these lined out. Now, between now and August, if some of 
the individuals decline enrollment or change their mind, um, you know, we could look at filling the seats we currently have. But our negotiation, um, our contract negotiation um, stems around certain numbers of students. Is there some sort of waiting list that we're keeping for kids, like you said, that might drop out? There's a waiting list of people? We, w Mr. Wiggins and I just talked about this, about having each principal or campus keep up with some that might have interest from here until the beginning of school starting. So yes, essentially, we can have a waiting list by building so that we'll know where our high needs are. We have started that. Go ahead. We have not started that currently, Travis, um, because we just had the, the close on, on Friday. Our original closing date was the third. We extended that to the 10th because we had a tremendous amount of interest. And we did a call out uh, at the beginning of last week to all of our, our people, our, our, our parents, to let them know uh, that we were extending that date and that we were having a definite cutoff on the 10th. Um, our issue is staffing. We have to have a solid number before we can continue with staffing. And we have to have that staff in place before we can set up classes and, and curriculums, especially at the secondary level. Um, so currently we have enough uh, that we're going to have one teacher per grade, K-6, and those teachers will have a, a, a range of numbers in those classes, but that will work out the best. Now, almost all of them will have more, more students virtually than they would have in their regular class, uh, but the, the, the thinking is that through the virtual setting and the virtual curriculum, you can handle more students. Uh, and then at the high school, middle school and high school, it's a little bit more difficult because it's not a single teacher teaching those kids. It's six teachers, seven teachers at the middle school, eight teachers at the high school on their current schedule. So we have to, uh, it's going to be complicated to try to get those classes that are needed covered in the virtual setting through our current staff without hurting our master schedules or completely reshuffling them. And some of those master, high school master schedule normally takes a couple of months to build. So we had to have some numbers here pretty solid uh, to move forward with as we're planning on staffing. That's the reason we needed a cutoff. And I think most of the other districts have set a cutoff uh, either last week or this week as well. So. So, so at the secondary level, does it look like maybe there would be an English teacher that might be teaching seventh grade through 12th grade? English? That's, that is a possibility um, when we look at those numbers. Um, the high school, what they started working on breaking down our current students um, that are already Siloam students that have signed up. We provided them the roster and they're starting to look at what they had scheduled for the upcoming year. So that's going to help us plan for what those offerings are. But we did talk through um, with Pearson last week about that exact thing, Dr. Matchell, about could that virtual teacher handle seventh grade through 12th grade? And all three on the screen said absolutely yes. That And the two of them had had experience with that specific thing. And one of them was an actual English teacher. <laughs> so she said, I've done it, I've been there. And you know, her load was more like 250 students. We're not looking at a teacher load that large. Wow. <laughs> so I, get what, I guess we get waivers from the state for numbers. Yes, there have been waivers um, provided and then um, with our virtual academy, um, Ms. Swebeck has already started creating some lists of additional waivers that, may, that we may want to ask for. We can do that under, um, is it 1240, Kelly? Yes. yes, see her nodding her head. Um, at 1240, we can um, pull from waivers that other schools have. So that is our plan to make certain that we can cover all our bases. Connie, we may also have some some secondary teachers who we ask to split between traditional and okay. virtual, uh, because we're going to have some 
some non-core classes that mm -hmm. all 200 secondary students don't have to take. We may only have 50 uh, okay. for a Spanish class or an art class or something like that. So we may have to split some, uh, and I think we will have some teachers willing to do that. Well, bless the hearts of the secondary people making those schedules, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's yes. crazy. Mr. White, <clears throat> working on that earlier and already sent an email with some student rosters and trying to break down their schedules. So it, it is going to be a large task, a hefty mm -hmm. task, but um, once we, get our virtual academy coordinator on the ground and running and then her connecting with principals and we can start working on those schedules and get a better a more accurate layout of what that needs to look like 712 okay any other questions related to ALE or the virtual academy Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lamb. All right, that brings us to Mr. Patrick. So I want a quick update on uh, the facilities projects we've got going on in the district. Uh, at the track, we were working on the gate getting it installed. It took us a while to get the footings. We had an electric line we had to work around, but the new gate is going up uh, currently, and we hope to have that co that complete completed soon. And that will uh, finish that project uh, at this time, and so we're looking forward to getting that done. Uh, another project that we have completed, and we're working on our closeout documents, but we've already done our final work walkthrough is our north side administration remodel and uh, very very proud of this uh, of this facility they they did a wonderful job uh, we had some issues that we had to work through to try to figure out how to make things work the best we could inside a current space when we remodeled and uh, between the architect and uh, the construction uh, group that did that we did a wonderful job along with uh, Randall's uh, help through our department here on campus, so uh, very excited about that. And um, also I wanted to mention to you that with the, the state pushing back the start of school, uh, we met today and we will be extending uh, food service, summer food service, a little longer than we had originally planned. And so uh, that information will be coming out soon about exactly what date we will stop serving, but we do plan to continue to feed our, the kids of our district uh, right up till about the time school starts. Does anybody have any questions? All right, thanks so much. Thank you. That one was short this time. <laughs> Mr. All Ryan. right, yes. Um, I have been corrected on something, so I want to make sure that I didn't tell you all something wrong. Uh, the live, the, the virtual graduation will be pushed out live at six o'clock on Friday, not seven. So oh, okay. <laughs> the virtual graduation will go live at six o'clock on Friday. And we had 222 walk across the stage out of a total of 301 graduates. Pretty good numbers. So my high school principal is uh, texting me and allowing me to correct myself during our meeting. <laughs> All right. So it, you are corrected and we are corrected. So that's good. Okay, Six o'clock Friday. All right. Yes, sir. All right. We'll move to action items. First on the agenda is to approve the June financials. Are you with us tonight? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Um, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> I am um, flabbergasted at our ending balance for this year. And there are many reasons why that ending balance is as high as it looks right now. Um, we started with 7.3 million. We added 4.3 million to wind up with 11.7. 
$1.6 million right now as an ending balance. What you all need to keep in mind though with that $4 million overage, um, two, a little over $2 million of that is due to the bond refunding. So that was money we had not expected on getting. Um, with school being shut down for the last three months of school, of course, we didn't have near the expenses that we would normally have those months. So that's also added monies that we had not expected to have. Um, we also received over $700,000 more in tax dollars than was anticipated. Um, a lot of those came from our delinquent taxes. So it was the perfect storm to get us to the balance that we have. We will, of course, we can only carry a certain percentage of that balance forward into our next school year. And so I will be moving a little over three million of that into our building fund. So when you see our beginning balance in July, it won't be this 11 million, it'll be somewhere in the $7 million range. Not exactly sure what that is right now. Um, <clears throat> we do get to move more over our beginning balance for next year will be higher because that is dependent upon how much revenue we receive in a year. It's this fantastic formula that you go through. Um, so that's all good news. Um, we got $500,000 in student growth funds, which is up $300,000 from the previous year. So that was wonderful to see that increase. Um, our foundation funding was up $700,000 compared to what, where we were last year. Um, our local revenue and state revenue from comparing last year to this year was seven, we were up $715,000. So our, our cash flow was really, really good this year. Um, as I look at our teacher salary expenditures, we spent 98% of what we had anticipated on spending. And in the month of June, 92% of all of our expenditures went towards salary and benefit. Now there were two payrolls in the month of June because we pay teachers for June and July. Um, and as I look and compare um, June 2020 exp uh, teacher salary expenses to June 2019 salary expenditures, we were $97,000 less than we were in June of last year. And that's simply because we were unable to provide all of the services that we normally provide to our students, such as extra duty, tutoring. Um, there was very little overtime for anybody during the month of June. And so you, you don't think that stuff adds up, but it's $97,000 difference from this June compared to last year. I just thought that was worthy to note. Um, that's really all I have to report right now. Do you all have any questions for me? On the foundation funding, you said it was up. Mm -hmm. Is that people, the pledged amounts paying off sooner or what? No, no, no. what that is from the state. That is not oh, our education. That's not our that foundation. Fund. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank that would you. be awesome, but no, this, this is from the state. Okay. That's, all right. Any other questions for Terry? I move that we approve the financials. Second. Second. There we go. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. We'll go to B, the school board policy updates for 2021 school year. Okay. So, uh, we, you, you, all of you board members were presented uh, in your board packets with, uh, with a copy of all of the proposed recommended changes. That have come out these changes have come out uh, because of several different things but most of them have to do with rule changes that took went into effect with the Department of Ed or law changes that happened because of uh, a time rollover 
Um, and then there are a few uh, changes that were recommended by our district administrators and our student section to add and, and to kind of clean up some of those policies as we run through. As we go through things throughout the year, if we find issues that we need to address, we make a note of them and come to you in the summer and ask you to approve some things to make, make them a little more pertinent to uh, our school district. As you'll note that all of the red underlined are changes, all of the blue strike throughs are omissions. And so uh, at this time, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have over any of these policies. And if not, I would recommend that, uh, that you uh, approve these policies and put them into our school board policy book. A motion to approve the policies as written. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay. Now we have a change order for Northside. Yes, sir. I'm uh, very happy to bring this change order to you and recommend that uh, you approve this. This change order will change our uh, guaranteed maximum price. Uh, throughout the project, we were able to save some money here uh, around different places throughout the project. We were able to just kind of save some money and we would like to recommend, or I'm recommending that we approve the change order that would reduce our guaranteed maximum price by $6,831.10. So bringing the total for that project to $235,910.90. We have a motion and a second. I kind of lost it. Yes. Somewhere we did. There. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, Shane, for that. And uh, at some point, it'd be nice if we could all go out there and look at it. I don't know if we could go as a group or if we need to go individually. I guess we can. We'll work on that. I would love to take uh, all of you on a tour. I know uh, Miss Miss Jerry would love for to show off that new office she just moved into and those surroundings. So anytime you guys would like to do that, I'd be more than happy to. Okay. You're not letting Thanks. Michelle see it, are you? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible, isn't it? Oh, oh gosh. All right. Uh, we'll move on to Memorandum of Understanding with uh, NWAC. Mr. Lamb, I am taking this one. Uh, this is the memorandum of understanding that we do, we approve every year with NWAC for concurrent uh, classes and concurrent enrollment for high school students at our high school. And it lays out uh, what we are going to do and what they are going to do in our uh, tuition for the coming year for those concurrent classes. Um, this is a yearly thing and it's a good option for our students. And I would uh, recommend that we continue with this and, and approve the MOU. Is this uh, similar to past years, the, the cost and everything that? Yes, um, NWAC gives us a very good deal. Uh, we pay, our, our students are asked to pay $54 per credit hour. Right. So for a three hour class, that's $162. Um, that is a very good deal for our kids and they get to take it on our campus uh, for the most part. And so uh, we have a lot of kids take advantage of this opportunity and I appreciate NWAC working with us in this way. Yeah, this it's is great. Unbelievably cheap. Yes. <laughs> a motion to approve. Second. Okay. For the vote, I'll make a comment on that too, that uh, it's a great, opportunity for the kids that are, that want to get a head start into college this win 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 for everything I, it's a wonderful program so all in favor aye aye opposed 
I wouldn't think so. All right. Now, uh, agreement with Ozark Guidance. So this is uh, also a yearly memorandum that we do. And this is Ozark Guidance and uh, Arisa Health. Uh, Arisa, I believe, uh, purchased or, or acquired uh, Ozark Guidance this past year. So this just allows them to, Ozark Guidance, to have uh, mental health therapists, counselors on our campuses and to work with our, our students. Uh, we would be in a bad situation if uh, Ozark Guidance didn't provide this service to our kids. Um, we don't have the manpower to handle the behavior, behavioral and mental health issues that all of our that our kids have and uh, our counselors uh, do their best and, and can help some but uh, without Ozark guidance I'm afraid that we would have a lot of students that didn't receive necessary help and so I, I am very appreciative to OGC uh, for partnering with the school district to help provide mental health services to our kids and I would uh, recommend that we approve this this MOU or MOA uh, for the upcoming year. I recommend that we approve the MOU with those our guidance. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, now we have the tuition agreement. So Ozark Guidance also provides therapeutic day treatment uh, to some of our students. And these are students who have behavioral uh, issues for the most part that uh, uh, don't allow them to be successful in a normal school, uh, traditional school setting. And um, we pay a daily tuition rate uh, for OGC to provide therapeutic day treatment services to these students offsite. Uh, they have a, a location here in town that they use uh, for therapeutic day treatment, and they also have one uh, over on the corridor, and most of our students go here in town. Uh, this is a, a service we have used uh, for the last, um, since I've been here, uh, actually, for uh, we've been using this uh, for quite a while, and we don't have that many, that, uh, uh, that many students that require um, these services, but we have some, and those who need them desperately need them and Ozark guidance provides their educate provides for their education and on-site counseling uh, and a, a very low student to adult ratio and I would recommend that we approve this tuition agreement just a question um, with the new alternative environment that we've talked about do you see the numbers going to therapeutic day treatment being smaller it's a very good question. And I think uh, I think that is a possibility. Um, I think it might redefine uh, the type of student that we might send to therapeutic day treatment. I think we might uh, we might look at trying to provide those services in house in that ALE setting first, and then uh, if that's not successful, move on to TDT. So, yes, to answer your question, I think that those numbers could go down because of our our elementary ALE. Um, but going into this next year, I also anticipate uh, we may have students come back with, uh, sure. with trauma you. experiences from the last five months of being out of school. Uh, we may have a, an increase in, in situations that need services like ALE and like TDT. Make a motion that we approve. This is an MOU with therapeutic day treatment. Those are guidance with therapeutic day treatment. Second. Well, this is the tuition agreement. Yes, sir. It's not an MOU. Okay, so I, I would move that we approve the tuition agreement. With there you go. <laughs> Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. That brings us to executive session for the purpose of resignations and hiring. We'll call ourselves back into open session and we need to accept some resignations. We do not have any resignations at this time. Okay. 
and we need to hire the staff for 2021 school year. Yes, sir. Uh, I have three uh, this evening to ask you to approve. Uh, Brittany Mooring, uh, we would like to hire as a second grade teacher. Uh, she is coming to us from uh, University of Arkansas Monticello and most recently was teacher at, a teacher at Woodlawn uh, in South Arkansas, two years experience. And then we have Adrian Schlake, uh, who we are recommending to be our virtual academy coordinator. She is coming to us most recently from the new school in Fayetteville and was at uh, Lincoln Public Schools in Lincoln, Nebraska prior to that. And I uh, would like to recommend Holly Parker as a middle school special education teacher. And I believe that Holly is fresh out of UCA and uh, this will be her first experience as a teacher and she will be at our middle school. I recommend that we hire those three. Motion to hire. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. I'm shuffling supplemental agendas here. Uh, no sick leaves, right? No, sir. Okay. Uh, transfers into Siloam, none? None at this time. All right, we're to L, and that's uh, transfers out. Yes, sir. We have three students requesting to transfer out. Uh, Breslin Welch and Maxon Welch, ages 10 and 6. Uh, I believe they moved into our district at some point last year from Gentry and uh, prefer the smaller setting in Gentry and have requested to transfer back. And then uh, Presley Ward has never been in school here, uh, has moved in from Oklahoma and would like to attend uh, Gentry. And I would recommend that we approve those three transfers. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that brings us to other business. And we have several things in the other business category tonight. Um, first off, we have a school resource officer, SRO, uh, program memorandum of understanding between the district and the city. And we have approved this uh, every year for quite a while. Uh, this outlines the responsibilities of the school resource officer, uh, the city and the school district and how we all work together. Um, I would recommend that we approve that memorandum. And to my knowledge, we will be keeping the same SROs that we ended this past year with. Uh, Shane, is, am I right in that? Okay. Yes. That is correct. I would like to move that we uh, approve this MOU uh, with, the, with the city for the SRO program. Second. Okay, and just a quick comment on that. I think it's very important that, uh, it, well, it's very good that we can work with the city and the city helps us with SRO officers and especially in this time that we're in, uh, it's very important that we have have some security and stability in our schools. So. And I, and I would uh, like to say that the, the five officers that work with us in this program are fantastic. Uh, yes. We had very, very good officers in our schools and I'm appreciative for that. You bet, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Leave of absence. Okay, I've had a request uh, come to me for a leave of absence from a high school teacher, Stacy Buff. Uh, she has provided me documentation and and uh, some information, and I believe that uh, it is warranted. And by our policy, uh, we have to be able to uh, have assurance that we can find a suitable replacement. Um, I believe that's possible at this point. Uh, we are getting late in the summer, uh, so. If it was much later than this, uh, I'm not sure that I would be uh, recommending that we do this, but uh, I've approved this leave of absence 
and just letting you all know that. Um, and then uh, the next item in the other category is our district calendar. Our governor last week uh, announced that we would not be starting school until August the 24th as at the earliest and at the latest August 26th. We were scheduled, our, our students were scheduled to come back on August the 13th. So we have had to adjust our calendar. And as you know, uh, you all approve our calendar as a policy. Uh, and we usually go through a, a process with our personnel policies committee and get things approved and have different calendars and it's quite a process. So we have condensed that process down to about three days and we have a calendar to propose to you all tonight uh, that matches up with the new start date of school. And basically what we have done is move some of the days that were in the middle of the year that we had set aside for professional development. Uh, just during, during the fall and the spring, we've moved a few of those days back to the beginning of the year before we start. And we will go to school on those days that were PD days during the year uh, previously. And so then we've, uh, we've shortened our Thanksgiving break. Uh, we were gonna take a full week off at Thanksgiving and we are now going to have three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, like we used to have uh, prior to a couple of years ago. So we've had to make some minor adjustments in there uh, to our calendar to uh, make accommodations for the later start date. And we have, uh, Kelly has run that by uh, members of both PPCs and we don't have to have approval from them like we would normally do in the spring because of the emergency situation and the and the governor's mandate, uh, but we wanted to get some feedback from them as well. So uh, she has met with them uh, and gotten uh, kind of the, the thumbs up on the proposed calendar that we are presenting to you tonight. So I would ask that you all approve the revised district calendar. I make a motion that we approve there the revised district calendar. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And I do want to just say real quick, thank you to all the administrators. I know that uh, a lot of the work you're having to do and do it twice and do it, redo it the next day. And we do really appreciate you. And it's a fluid situation. It's tough, but thank you all for your what you're doing. You bet. Okay, the next item uh, under other is uh, a face mask discussion. Uh, put out a letter a couple of weeks ago that uh, we would follow the guidance as written from the Department of Health and the Department of Education that we would strongly recommend face masks for kids and staff when we return to school. Um, Things seem to have gotten worse uh, since then, and there has been some movement uh, around this issue with uh, the governor uh, declaring that cities and schools could uh, require face masks, and then multiple school districts locally across the state uh, passing a requirement or a policy to require face masks, and then some uh, municipalities doing the same thing. Um, I am fairly convinced that uh, there is no necessarily right or wrong answer on this. And I think that uh, uh, either way we go, whether we require them or whether we re recommend them, we are going to have people upset with us. Um, and that situation, I feel like as superintendent, I need to uh, come down on the side of the safety and security of our staff and our students. So I believe it is in our best interest uh, as a school district to come up with a policy uh, to require face masks for students and staff members when we return on August 24th. Um, currently, during the summer, all of our staff members, we are requiring face masks of all of our staff members currently. Um, and I believe that that is the right thing to do when we return to school. So I am uh, letting you all know that we are working on a policy currently uh, we will run that by our district attorney and we will uh, uh, 
look at other examples and we will bring you all a policy uh, if we have a, a a special called board meeting toward the end of this month for hiring purposes, we will bring it in. If not, we will bring it at the August board meeting. Uh, would welcome any discussion you all might have around that topic. Well, I think that probably, <clears throat> I don't think that the recommendation of wearing is probably going to be strong enough for the safety of everybody involved and I think it's going to need to be a requirement. Um, I know that in the business sector uh, it's required and uh, so I you know like you say for the safety of everybody at least for now how, how would that work so if we we uh, adopt this policy at some point that hopefully in the near future, can you rescind a policy? How does that, how would that work? We, we could rescind a policy uh, at any given time or, uh, it, or we could try to work on some language in there that gives us some flexibility uh, as a school district to, uh, to back off that requirement back uh, back. under needed. So we will look at, uh, at trying to put some language in there that gives us a little bit of flexibility. Well, I appreciate your efforts on this. And I know it's going to be tough to, to get all the language right, and it'll definitely be tough on teachers and students and everybody. But, but as you said, with the safety factor right now, I, I don't see any way around it. But, okay. That's my take. That's my discussion. And if we, if we are requiring these masks, we are providing them? Yes, ma'am. We are already have ordered uh, cloth face masks, three per every student and every staff member in the district. Uh, even when we were at the recommendation level, uh, we were going to hand those out to everyone at the beginning of the school year. Uh, and we have uh, also included face masks on all of our uh, school supply lists for parents. So we will supply some and then the expectation will be uh, if we pass this policy, uh, the expectation will be that students are are providing their their students their children face masks in addition to the ones that we provide at the beginning of the year so that they can have a face mask every day when they come to school and it's my understanding that we've also ordered some face shields yes ma'am uh, we have uh, placed an order for some face shields uh, face masks are not uh, ideal for certain teaching situations uh, especially when we're teaching phonics at the lower grades or, uh, or speech therapy work uh, with some of our kids and, uh, or if a student might need to, to be able to uh, read lips in a classroom to help them uh, understand what's going on. All of those are educational reasons not to wear a face mask, but to wear a face shield instead. Uh, we will also build into the policy some exceptions for medical issues, uh, whether it be a student or a a staff member who might have a medical reason where they can't wear a mask or are advised against it. Any other discussion on that? take that as no, so I guess we'll move on. Okay, we have uh, one more um, action item that came in late, and it is an agreement for speech language therapy services with Rochelle Moyers. Uh, we had had a, a contract uh, in the past with Brenna Hornbuckle to provide some speech therapy services. She was not a a daily employee of ours, but she was contracted at an hourly rate. And this person, Rochelle Moyers, would be a replacement for Brenna, since Brenna and Tim have moved away from us. Um, and I would recommend that we approve this contract uh, to, uh, for her to provide services for our special ed department. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 
Aye. Opposed? Okay. And to finish up, I just have a few, uh, a few things just to let you know about announcements. Uh, certified transfers. We are transferring Ashley Long from middle school library media specialist to intermediate library media specialist. And to replace Ashley at middle school, we are transferring Samantha Thompson from middle school seventh grade math to middle school library media specialist. We have hired some classified uh, uh, staff members, Jasmine Rubio, Allen special ed para, Jennifer Rossi, intermediate administrative assistant, Melissa Didier, Northside classroom aide. And then we had a classified resignation from Michelle Anderson, food service, Northside kitchen manager. Um, we also transferred a classified staff from Kayla Penner from middle school special ed para to intermediate special ed para. And that is all I have, sir. All right. As Grant had commented earlier about the thanking the administration and all you guys' work. I think we could do it, say that again, that I, we certainly appreciate all that's going on with all your efforts for everything from virtual school now to safety with masks and it's trying times and, and we appreciate all the efforts you guys are putting forth and making things happen for the for the betterment of the education of the kids and the safety of the kids and teachers. So, I, I would also like to add to, um, I don't know if everybody's aware of the website to uh, make comments, uh, but I, I appreciate the fact that that's been put up uh, so that anybody that has a concern about coming back to school has an opportunity to give uh, input on that subject. Yes, ma'am. And I would like to pass those thank yous on to my team because we have a, a wonderful group of people that work for us and they've put in long hours and they will continue to put in long hours. And uh, we, have, we have a lot of work to do between now and start of school. And I appreciate mm -hmm. that, that I work with. All right. Motion to adjourn. There we go. Thank you. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you, guys. Uh, when's, good, the, when's the next scheduled board meeting? Real quick. You still the there, Joey? Yes, I'm here. The next scheduled meeting is August the 13th. 13th? Okay. All right. Well, and depending you. on our hiring situation, I may ask you to uh, have a special meeting toward the end of this month. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good night. Thank you.